We play and call it work. Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargaming.com. Welcome, Wargamers, to another Sit and Talk. This week, I'll be answering the questions that you have left. For next week, leave your comments for Chris. He'll be answering your questions next week. I'm going to dive right into the questions here. I look forward to doing these because I like to see what you guys leave and gives me a, a good feel about what you guys are thinking and uh, the kind of things that you liked and all of that. It's a good communication tool for you guys, for me and you. So, Mason of Skulls says, Apple of Corn and Pie Plates. If you could only have one, which would it be? Pie Plates. Jedi22, Dave, enjoying the content you have been producing, just wondering if you would bring in some Thousand Suns, Noise Marines, or Plague Marines into your bat reps as they aren't included in a lot of the lists you produce. Keep up the good work for Corn. So, that being said, I will let you in on a little secret. It's not going to be a secret anymore because I'm going to tell you and then everyone will know. But the original Path to Glory that I did with Quirk, where we had Corn versus Slanesh, I have a Corn army and I have a Slanesh army. My Zinch and Nurgle armies right now are not completed to the liking that I would have them. So I'm going to be building upon those armies, those two specific armies, Nurgle and Slanesh. So I'm going to be doing more Path to Glories, it, the uh, true Path to Glories where you use the Chaos Warbands and you build them up. The next will be Nurgle and Zinch. And the winner between Nurgle and Zinch will be fighting the winner of the Korn versus Slanesh Path to Glory. And I'm not going to tell you who won that series because if you want to watch it and you haven't watched it yet, go back and watch that one. It's the original Path to Glory, Korn versus Slanesh between Quirk and I. And I'll continue that series with Quirk because he was there in the beginning and he'll be there throughout the middle and then he'll be there for the finale. So that, that's just what I'm going to do. That's my plan with it anyway. So if you want to see some more Thousand Suns and Noise Marines and Plague Marines, you're about to see more. And in addition to that, I'll be throwing them in some regular bat reps. I think that would be good to do that. Just to, you know, get, walk them. Just to get them moving and not be so sedentary. On, on the shelf. I agree with that. Brog Luniel says, Dave, if the mini working staff were dogs, what breed of dog would they be? Hmm. Okay. I wonder what I would be. I don't know what I would be. Let's see. If there's a dog that kind of represents chaos the most, maybe it would be... Uh, Probably a hound dog. Flesh hounds? Okay, um, anyway, that probably would be a hound dog. I think Matt would be a golden retriever. Uh, Quirk would be a poodle. Josh would be a, like a bulldog, I would say. Steve would be a I think Steve might be like a like a Great Dane. Uh, although they're, hmm. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about the dog breeds here. What would Matt be? No, I already said Matt. Yeah, I think that's probably what I can think. Of. I'm not sure. I'm not. See, the thing is, I love dogs. If I weren't allergic to dogs, I would have a dog. I love dogs so much. And it actually hurts me to even think about this right now because I've always wanted a dog. And so because I w couldn't have a dog, I settled for a bearded dragon, which I've named Carney because of Karn the Betrayer. But that's what I named him. My kids, they call him Carney. He's good. He, he doesn't make me allergic. Thousand Sun Sorcerer. Dave, did you know the Chaos Space Marine Codex doesn't specify you have to kill the character in a challenge to roll on the boon table? It just says that when you kill an enemy character. So if your aspiring champion kills a Farseer with a Kami Melta, he can roll on the boon table. I think with that, yeah, I, I don't disagree. Uh, with that, it's actually, for me to remember that I got to roll on the boon table, first off, is it's a good thing if I remember, period. 
Uh, so in my books, it's like, it's a golden star, if I remember it. But thank you for saying that because, uh, you know, hey, you never know. I might become a demon prince. They might win the battle. It's possible. The Invisible Man 1 says, Dave, the first drafts of the FAQs for Chaos Basement Codex have recently come out. If you, if you have had the chance to read them, I would like to know your thoughts on them. Well, with that, I think I'd like to make a completely separate video just reviewing them and going over them because they deserve their own spotlight and attention. Godzilla117, I can't thumb up the comment below for some reason, but I agree that Thousand Suns are especially neglected and the Noise Marines and Plague Marines usually only appear in narrative games or the Halloween specials. I hope there will be another zombie mission for Halloween or some sort of special and maybe you can do a winter holiday slash new year special. Love the content. Keep making awesome sauce and happy wargaming. I have a confession. I have seven Plague Marines. All other Nurgle-esque Marines that I have in my collection are converted Chaos Space Marines, which could be played as Plague Marines, but I, to be more true to form, they really should be played as Chaos Space Marines with the Mark of Nurgle. That's just how I feel about it. So true Plague Marines, that's what I, that's what I got. So th that's what I want to build. I want to build an army of Plague Marines with Rhinos that are Nurgle. Havocs that have Mark of Nurgle, which is, in my mind, very fluffy, very redundant. I would never put the Mark of Nurgle on Havocs, but because it's themed and fluffy, that's what I'm going to do for everything. You name it. It's coming. Nurgle is coming in its true and proper form. It will be accurately represented and justifiably represented on the tabletop and not just uh, proxied. Although Market Dave isn't that bad, I want to give it its full justice. That's just, that's my desire. That's what I want to do. I've been focusing on corn for a long time and I love corn. I will not abandon corn, but time for some Nurgle and Zinch. William Ka says, Dave, I just want your opinion on a silly idea. Warhammer reinforcements fix. One ten-sided percentile dice, one ten-sided dice. The idea is that every round is equal to a times to your roll. What are you still trying to do is get 50%. Example, round two, you roll 20 and eight, two inches at eight at 20 equals 56 inches. you can add on to this idea. I'm not gonna lie, I don't fully follow that train of thought. I'm not a numbers guy. I am uh, I'm more creative brained than I am logical brained. That, that's just a, uh, you know what you're looking at in the background is like, or, or the studios for example, I'm good at that. I'm not good at numbers. I'm decent at numbers, but I'm not good at numbers, if that makes sense. So, but I think I have an idea of what you're talking about, and that would be interesting. So, we can elaborate on that. In Zane, Zane, Dave, you made me like banter bat reps. Two questions. One, what's in you fruit salad of chaos? Two, how do I transport my army across the Atlantic Ocean, the safest way for a battle report against you people? Okay, well, there's definitely some corn in the fruit salad. And number two, the safest way for you to, well, there's a number of things you can do. You can just simply get your, it depends on how big of an army, really. A lot of people just bring their army, they pack it in their luggage with clothes and stuff around it in their miniature carry case. I've done that when I've traveled. I've just put my miniatures in my carry case and put it in my luggage, and then in the luggage I pack around it. That's one way. Another way is you can ship your models here which I don't recommend because a lot of times they get wrecked. They get wrecked along the way in transit. And the other, the third option is you could actually borrow one of our army, one of our studio armies that we have here at Mini Wargaming, provided that you, you know, you play something that we collect. Could be anything Space Marine, it could be anything, anything Chaos, Tyranids, Necrons, Tau, Eldar. And it, it could be even, like it could be Ultramarines, White Scars, because we have the mini wargaming chapter, that could really represent any chapter. So 
you could borrow one of our armies is what I'm saying. But it's better if you bring your own. That's, that's, the, that's like the backup if you can't bring your own. I certainly recommend it. Uh, da Zared says, Also, I know you're super busy with Ranger stuff and tons of 40k, but do you play any other tabletop games aside from 40k? Are there any you wish you could do content on? Um, and when you say 40k, I'm assuming you also mean 30k, because I like 30k. I don't currently play any other tabletop game. I started by playing Lord of the Rings when it was big. This was close to 10 years ago. That's what got me into miniature wargaming at all, period, is Lord of the Rings. And my transition from that to 40k was actually a very tough transition. I didn't want to do it at first. But then I saw Chaos Models and I fell in love with it, so it came. So that would be fun to play again, I think. As well as The Hobbit, I think those would be fun. I've played a little bit of fantasy. I don't prefer the game. That's not saying, I'm not saying that the game isn't good, I'm just saying I don't prefer it. Same with War Machine, I don't prefer the game. I don't have as much fun playing those games as I do 40K. 40K is my all-time favorite tabletop miniature war game. I think that's gonna have to suffice. ABF36, LOL. Who else heard Beverly says hi? Oh, I think this was a comic for Quirk. Dixie says, hi Dave, and thanks for responding to my question last time you had sit and talk. I have two questions for you. When will we see the review of the rest of the Great Space Wolves companies? Will you also make an introduction video of the lasted addition to the Mini Wargaming crew? Thanks for all the great videos and all the others add Mini Wargaming make. Please make, please Kate, please keep up the great work. You're welcome for responding to your last comment. We are doing more Space Wolf content. In fact, this is kind of an upcoming thing. Many years ago, and when I say many, I mean like two, so not really that long ago. It was before seventh edition, so it was a little bit ago. I did this series where I opened up a Dark Vengeance, I showed you exactly what was in it, and then I built an army using, or starting with, the models that you get in Dark Vengeance. And it was very well received. And when I say well received, I mean it got a lot of views, a lot of comments, a lot of likes. I did it in a pair of videos, which means that the first video was on YouTube and the second video was in the vault. So it garnered a lot of vault signups, which is one of the key indicators for us to let us know that it is a successful video. So what I've decided to do is a similar thing with Space Wolves. So I went on the GW site and I saw the starter pack that you get. It's literally called Let's, or it's called Start Collecting, exclamation mark, Space Wolves. That's the name on the box. So that's pretty cool. So what Josh and I have done is we've made four videos so far, which we will continue to make more on top of the four, but that's the first four. And in this series of videos, we open up the Start Collecting Space Wolves box and we show you what's in it. And then we build upon what's in that. And we build up to a 1500 point army just to show you what you can do with it. And then after that, we did, we did it again, only we build a different Space Wolves army, depending on the direction that you want to go. The second video was a starting with 15, or starting with, um, let's, start collecting Space Wolves starter box, and then we built up to a 1500 point Black Mains Space Wolf army, because a lot of people like Black Mains, and I, I don't blame them. It's very good. You get a lot of models in that one for inexpensive. It's probably, in my opinion, it's one of the best Space Wolf options for when you are collecting Space Wolves. Because when I say options, I mean like Space Wolves armies that exist in 40k. And we go over that in detail in the video. And it was a fun video to make. I like those discussion videos. And if you guys like it, which I'm guessing that you do, and this is uh, based off of how much you guys liked the Dark Vengeance starter set, box set, and building upon that up to a 1500 point army, then we will continue making more. And even more in the future, not just Space Wolves, we'll do the same thing for other armies. 
we can do that for just straight up chaos space brains because uh, that exists and we shall see how it's received if it's well received we'll definitely create more pal 310 says dave you have been following the american presidential election it seems like americans will move to canada if donald trump wins can i pitch a tent on mini wargaming parking lot and live there i don't like any of the candidates so i will need to live in the parking lot for four years until next election obviously i'm being theatrical what will you do if 100,000 americans come to live in canada well i like americans so if that happened I wouldn't have a problem with it. <laughs> it's, a, it's an odd question, I'm not gonna lie. What would I do? I would probably do nothing. I don't think I'd do anything at all. I would just uh, let the chips fall where they may. I, I think there might be more uh, visitors here to Mini Wargaming, which I would certainly like. But, yeah. Dark Angel Ayala says Dave just wanted to really just wanted to say really enjoying the Captain Slaughter Path of Glory campaign and the slow grow campaign with you and Steve. So far your traitorous space wolves have been victorious. Is there anything that you would just hate to face from the Dark Angels army? And is there anything you feel like is missing from your army so far? All right, let's think about this for a second. In Space Wolf Army I actually feel like it's a pretty solid list that you guys have created. For those of you who are unaware, Steve and I started a slow grow campaign where we use your suggestions, your the viewers' suggestions, for what we should collect in our armies. Now, I already have a Space Wolves army, but Steve is just starting out with his army. So it's a lot of times your suggestion means that Steve goes out and gets a new unit and adds it to his army. So, neat idea. And it's been very well received, knowing what the parameters are for judging the success of a video series. You guys know that it was successful. And we have been really enjoying it. And it's been very interesting to see your comments and see your thoughts and the direction which you guys are taking this. Because really, we add what you guys suggest. And it is your army. As much as I'm playing it, I feel like I'm playing your army. Which is a really cool feeling. I love that interaction. I want to do more of that interaction because I, that's why I make the videos. I love the interaction. I, I love this right here. I can feel it. And doing more of that stuff is just, it lets you guys know as well that we, we care about you and we listen to you and we hear your suggestions. And that's like a direct correlation. That's like a direct lifeline between us. And it's been a lot of fun. And again, because that was so much fun, I think we're gonna do more of that in the future as well. We'll do more slow grows. Maybe in the future we'll do a, we'll do a slow grow campaign where uh, we could even experiment with armies that we already have. So instead of Steve, or instead of somebody buying new models, which is not a problem, we can strictly do that in the future. But for the next one, what I'm thinking is, we grab two of the largest armies that we have and then we leave all the comments up to you. That way we're able to post more videos more frequently, like one a week, because we had to switch to one every two weeks with the slow grow because we needed time to gather the comments and for Steve to collect the models and paint them up and to make the full size of units that you guys are suggesting, right? But if there's two big armies that already exist, we just simply grab them together. And I think that would be a lot of fun to do that. So much fun. So that might be an idea for another series, is the a second slow grow where we choose different armies and we just go from there. Because it's Space Wolves versus Dark Angels, maybe it can be a chaos one. Maybe. Maybe it could be chaos, maybe straight up chaos versus Space Marines. Could be that. Or maybe a particular chapter, we could do, uh, like I said, because we have the mini wargaming chapter that can proxy as any chapter, we could fill that in because we have a lot of models for the mini wargaming chapter. We have a lot of that color scheme, so anything could fit in there, really. I think I would probably get my butt kicked, though, because Space Marines, I hate to say it, are stronger than Chaos. But they don't have a stronger fighting spirit. 
All right. I hope I answered the question. I hope I didn't get just so distracted that I just didn't answer the question, but I, I think I answered it. No, didn't answer the question. Okay, do I feel like anything's missing from Space Wolves? No. I have Wolfen. Well, there's definitely vehicles missing from the army, so that's, that's an obvious one. Would I want more vehicles? Yes, of some sort. Would I want a Land Raider? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but then he gets another one, so that means I'm fighting two Land Raiders, so no, I don't think I would want... Not saying that you guys would choose a Land Raider for him, but if I had a Land Raider, what would he get, right? I don't know, maybe some Land Speeder? Maybe Drop Pod? I, I definitely feel like I am armorless because I am armorless. And I'm concerned that Dark Angels might get more armor, which would be difficult for Space Wolves. But at this point in time, Space Wolves seem to be doing pretty well, so I'm happy about that. All right. Sir Knight Offender. Dave, who is the tallest person at Mini Wargaming? Steve. Yeah, Steve. <laughs> okay, there's Steve and... Yeah, it's Steve. No, no, hands down. There's no one taller than Steve. There's no, one's ta there's no one taller or bigger than Steve. So Steve is almost 400 pounds, by the way. Uh, he told me this the other day, and I believe it. He's a large man. And my son, who is obsessed right now with comparing and strength and size and height and so he he's he asked me very abstract questions which i love by the way he says uh daddy if hulk and a blue whale were in a fight who would win so stuff like that and my mom tells me that morgan is a carbon copy of me when i was a little boy so th that's why I, I love all these questions because i asked a million questions when i was a young boy too and so i'm loving every second of it. But that's, how, that's his thinking, right? So, and he just, he, he had growing pains the other night. So it was very sad, he was in a lot of pain. So we gave him some, uh, some Tylenol and you know, kind of massaged his legs. And in the morning when he woke up, he said, Daddy, am I taller today? Because I had growing pains in my legs last night? I'm taller, right? I'm gonna measure myself up to you. Am I taller than your belly button? I think I'm taller. I'm taller, right, Daddy? So all these questions, right? And uh, so I think he, I think he believes that he's a little bit taller. And for all intents and purposes, he probably is taller than the night before. He didn't have growing pains. It can only stand a reason that you grow when you have growing pains. Um, so he, he's so preoccupied with this. Everything he thinks about is constantly this and competition and. And we jump in the pool, and he's like, was my splash higher than your splash, Daddy? And so he says to me, he says, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be as big as Steve. I said, but Morgan, Steve weighs 400 pounds. And he's like, I know. I want to be 400 pounds when I grow up. <laughs> I loved it. I, I, I just, I love it so much. May not have the genetics to be 400 pounds like Steve is, but... Eh... Uh, I'm rooting for him. I, I think that he could, uh, he could surpass me. I'm six feet, and uh, he is on his mom's side. They have some pretty tall guys, six four, six six. So he might be pretty big. I think he'll be bigger than me when I grow up. Okay, let's go back to the questions here. Admit A says, "Whom would you rather fight, a quirk-sized Steve or a Steve-sized quirk?" How fitting is it that a question like that exists after the whole story that I just shared with you? It's not a coincidence. It can't be because that's, that's way too coincidental. But who would I rather fight? Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to picture it in my mind. Uh, I, I think... I don't think a Steve-sized anybody would be a fair fight, so I'm going to say a quirk-sized Steve. That's probably who I would fight. 
<laughs> I love it though, it's great. Uh, chosen one said, oh wait, hold on a sec. Yes, chosen one. Between you asking people to wish Steve a happy birthday and Steve asking people to send resumes for an online assistant job, no wonder. I was wondering about that. And Josh asking commenters to call Quirk Beverly, it seems like there has been an uptick in the office pranks. Is the summer heat getting to you guys? Chosen one. Okay, I think now it's time to send out another blast to somebody. What could it be? Hmm. Okay, the wheels are turning. What could it be, guys? Send me your thoughts and I will, I will vocalize them. I think, uh, let's see. I know, okay. This is what I think it should be. This summer, we're filming the Rangers movie here at Mini Wargaming, it's a feature film. And Quirk is reprising his role as Magra the Merciless. And in order to do so, he needs to put on this full pullover silicone cowl mask. And as you can imagine, it's very hot. The heat stays in, the sweat drips. And not only that, the holes in the mask where the eyes, nose, and mouth are. The eyes, it has uh, silicone glue, and the mouth has silicone glue, so the heat can't even escape out here. The only way, it, it just simply doesn't escape. So he cooks inside this thing, and for months, he's been dreading wearing this. And he's in the movie a lot, so he, he'll have a lot of scenes and a lot of shoot days right in the heart of summer, right in the heat of summer. So, this is what we gotta do. We gotta bombard Quirk with this. And by the way, his email is quirk at manywargaming.com, just so you know, it's a very easy email. You gotta say this, Quirk, good luck with shooting the Rangers with your Magra mask. Because I hear that it'll be really hot. If you say something to that effect and just remind him of how tortured he will be, that will give me so much joy. Th that'll give me so much. If you could just, you know, remind Quirk of this thing that he's been dreading to do for many months, I think that is probably the appropriate thing to say to Quirk right now, because uh, he's about to film very soon. In fact, tomorrow we start shooting the film. Yeah, I think that's a that's a equal in measure to the wishing Steve a happy birthday. I think that's a good thing to do. Quirk at miniwargaming.com. Hey Quirk, I, I heard that you're playing Mogger again. I'm excited to see it. And I hear that the mask is really hot in the summertime. <laughs> just, just, you just say that, it would give me immense joy knowing that he gets inundated with emails reminding him of the torture that he's about to experience. It, it's just, it would do, thank you. I, I already, I can already feel it right now through the, the in airwaves. I'm getting so giddy just thinking about it. And I know, I know he's gonna come, like, he's gonna, he's, he'll say something. He, he, and his reaction is gonna be so good and priceless. And uh, see, he's reactionary as well. He, he's one of those guys that uh, you can, you can do this too because uh, because he hates it so much. That's it. So I think this is a good place to end the uh, sit and talk. I will continue with the sit and vault. So if you wanna click on the link below and we can continue the sit and talk in the vault, I will only be responding to vault members' comments that you guys have left. And remember to leave comments for Chris next week. Just put at Chris. Um, yeah, don't forget to email Quirk as well. Quirk at miniwargaming.com. So, vault members, I'll see you in the vault. If you're not a vault member, then you can still click on the link below and sign up for a seven day free trial to the Mini Wargaming Vault and uh, participate in all that is in the vault because you not only get to see this video, but I like to compare it to the Netflix of Wargaming. It's a fraction of the size. It's not nearly as big, obviously, but if it was, that'd be awesome, but it isn't. It's very small comparatively, but it kind of is like Netflix because there are thousands, literally, 
uh, thousands of videos that exist in the mini wargaming vault. There are many narrative campaigns, many. You can go back and you can watch all of the past narrative campaigns that you may have missed. You could also watch all of the battle reports that exist in all the different gaming systems. And if you get a Silver Vault member, then you get to see all of the painting tutorials that exist. And that is now in the hundreds. There are hundreds of painting tutorials that exist in the Mini Wargaming Vault, created by both Chris and our other painter. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? Janine? If you haven't seen Janine's videos, then watch Janine. She's very good at what she does. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more shenanigans because that, that's what we do. It's a whole big cooking pot of shenanigans. And uh, I like to stir the pot. And this week, Quirk is the spoon. He's going in. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. I, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I just, I, I'm not going to sleep tonight because I'm so happy about this. So that's all. Thank you. Click the link below. See you in the next video. Happy Wargaming.